Hey, Vanessa Carlton. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on WTOP in Washington, D.C. Thank you for having me. Now, we're talking because you're coming to the Rams Head in Annapolis, Maryland on March 1st and the Birch Mirror in Alexandria, Virginia on March 2nd. Two chances for our folks in the D.C. area to, to come see you. Um, didn't you recently just didn't you just tour with Stevie Nicks? You know, what, what did you learn uh, from touring with her? Any good vibes and carry over into this tour? <laughs> yeah, all of that, man. That was it, that was amazing. So, yeah, I opened for Stevie's show um, last year. Uh, last fall oh my god what is time it flies um and of course like it's like watching a master class yeah. watching that show every night you know um being able to learn and figure out what you want to pull and take it and just yeah it's um really inspirational to get to tour with her and of obviously this tour is like um so that was just me by myself and the piano which is a little bit terrifying because it was just me and like 15,000 people and yeah. holy crap like every show I have like an anxiety attack before that never goes away the nerves never and once you get out there it's good but like it's God. so um I feel like she th that opportunity got me back sort of in the saddle so to speak um cuz I think a lot of performers that I know would just we've had a weird few years you know not a lot of sh sh performing not a lot of connecting to your to your audience so I'm just pumped to be able to do these intimate shows again um and just be in the same room as other human beings like you know experiencing music I love it um and I and of course we should tell everyone that um it's called the future pain tour which is a song off your latest album love is an art um I want to I wanted to do a deep dive on the new album if you don't mind on a couple of the songs so we mentioned future pain uh talk about sort of the inspiration for that I guess it's sort of this vicious cycle of self-destruction you know destruction nothing to lose nothing to gain but future pain sort of that idea but you keep doing it <laughs> is that is that where, what what the vibe is or what was the message for you so uplifting, right? Right, I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I think that uh, well, first of all, that song we're gonna play. I love that song, it, and I never got the opportunity to tour that album, so I thought it was just sort of a uh, a, a cheeky and maybe somehow appropriate title for the whole tour. Though I understand that it's not the most uplifting, but I think part of the point is um is like. I like the idea of feeling like, I mean, when I go to a show, it just feels like usually like a very safe space for me to feel all the, the spectrum of things that's go, that are going on, in my, that's going on in my life, the good, the bad, um, the, the, the pain, you know, the joy, and just having that connection of, uh, you know, through humility, humanity with everybody else in that room. So, you know, I, I think by nature of, connecting through this through music I think people feel good and even if you are singing about some stuff that can that is hard and it's like as long as you sort of have a set list that goes through all the realms I think that um I, I think it just feels like joyful when you leave a show that's my hope for, for oh the show. yeah even though it's called future pain I hope when the, your future after you leave the show is not painful <laughs> exactly well like you're saying it covers the spectrum because there's future pain where you're living with, dealing with sort of you know downer you know vicious cycle of stuff but then there's also i don't know back to life which is your body coming back to life after being in the dark maybe addiction or abuse play you know what i mean like uh rebirth of sorts so uh talk about what you're going through what you were going for with back to life in terms of are you trying to inspire audiences to find a rebirth well that song in particular yeah, I guess that goes nicely and hand in hand with you. The future pain song was just about cyclical. Like, you know, when you know you're about to make your, your, you know that this decision you're about to make is not good for you, but you're going to do it anyway. I think everyone has had that moment, right? So I just wanted to like write, we wanted to write that song mm -hmm. um, for all of you out there that do that too. And then, so back to life though, that particular song, which is also on the, the last album, Love is an Art, that was about really coming out of a lot of, you know, um, like drug and alcohol um, abuse and really coming back into like kind of breaking patterns, which can, it takes practice to like really break some patterns and like really just come back into the world again um, in the way that, that, that I wanted to. Um, 
And I, you know, I don't know. I hope that other people can relate, relate to that moment too. Absolutely. Let's do another one off that album while we're breaking it down. How about the only way to love And The, the line is I want to run, but I won't get very far because <laughs> I fight, fight, can't fight the force of my young beating heart. So, yeah. uh, well, uh, just explain sort of, I mean, I've, a lot of people can probably relate to that one, right? They, they, even if they try to leave, they, they, they're just so in love or they can't fight that, you know? <laughs> the romantics. I love the romantics because God, they're so brave. They're so much more brave than me, but, um, <laughs> That's for all the romantics out there that um, really are so honest in their feelings. And um, I think that you can't be, yeah, yeah. That song in particular is about going all in, you know? So I'm not saying that you do that right away, but I think that being someone like from my own experience, um, being have, have gone through periods of being overly protective of myself and distrust, just not trusting of my own, surroundings and people and it's always held me back from connection um and really I think what's interesting about that song too it's really more about trusting yourself and trusting your mm. the way that you see people the way that you it, that's what's really about and that's what allows someone to jump off the cliff and just be like okay I'm gonna try this with you like let's let's do this like you know that feels it feels amazing for that sure kind of well, time for one more on off that album because you've been the, the three we mentioned are you know more like very personal sort of ideas. Um, but die dinosaur is I guess more of a larger, broader social commentary sort of an idea. At least the way I read it of die dinosaur is sort of like young people, young voters maybe waiting for older, out of touch dinosaurs, people in power, uh, to die off so that you know the the new wave can come through. Is that is that what inspired you to do die dinosaur? I assume. I mean, it kind of needless to be say after the last couple. Like, cycles right oh totally <laughs> just the old guard that's like guarding progress you know it's not about age i'm not an ageist i mean right. i'm old like what like i feel like a dinosaur myself sometimes but like it's about Out outdated way of thought it's about the way that you think yeah um and so yeah it is i think we are really on this precipice of a whole new era of um communication and and the way that people connect on like because of the internet I think there's good and bad obviously there's it's really difficult for people to decipher between what's true and what's not that's obviously a fundamental issue at this point like for sure but what's the, the good has been that so many people come together over issues and share situations that allow humanity I think in it, to move forward and to solve some big problems. I hope so. I hope that that's the direction that, that we're moving. Cause there's a lot of people now it's so <laughs> like popular. I'm like, there's a lot of us, you know, we really got to hone our, uh, our, our communication skills and also think more um, outside of the, take some risks in our thinking things, think more outside of the box. And it's really all about, moving forward you know i agree entirely I agree entirely well we're talking so much about moving forward but real quick i want to talk i want to take us back really quick i want to know your origin i know you you were born and you grew up in pennsylvania um in i guess in the 80s what sort of stuff did you listen to or how'd you get bit by the music bug i want to know if there was you know like a i don't know a piano teacher or a song on the radio you know i don't know if it's probably yeah. never an easy answer like that but you know what i mean what sparked it oh god the 80s man I am a dinosaur, aren't I? <laughs> um, so, well, my mom is a piano teacher. So she taught me to play the piano and she would run, she ran a piano piano school out of our house. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of pianos that we had and a lot of playing. Uh, and I think a lot of the pieces that I really started becoming interested in, in, um, in terms of music were, were, were classical pieces and then um, she was really smart and would bring in like books, like song books of records that were, you know, like a Neil Young record. Like you could learn how to play Harvest Moon and you were also learning like a Debussy piece. I thought that was really smart for kids that, or like Top of the Pops. That was my favorite. It was like a Top of the pop, So you could learn like the cheers, bum, ba -na 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 -ba. like what <laughs> people, that's what a kid wants to play. But, but I also love the classical, like there was some really interesting classical stuff that I was learning. And then on my dad's, my dad's side in terms of influence, he's just much more straightforward. Um, 
you know, we'd always, he was always listening to like Pink Floyd and like, you know, Carol King, uh, Fluid Mac. Um, so that was, that was sort of my upbringing musically. Right. Absolutely. So that's cool. So you kind of got it honestly, the parents, it was, it was, it was right there from the beginning with the mom as the piano teacher. Cool. So, but then, yeah. all right, well then fill, you can't escape it, but fill in the gap there between that. And when you get signed for, you know, be that nobody, you're the first big massive album. Like, um, what, did I read that you went to school in New York, but dropped out of Columbia to, to kind of do the singing gig around town thing, or, you know, what were those early struggling years, you know, before you got signed? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was sort of like a very hit hit or miss waitress for some time there, but but really what I did was I I mean I was a ballet dancer when I was nine I really started studying pretty seriously and then I moved to New York because I got into the School of American Ballet which I really wanted to attend that school I love the New York City Ballet so I was in that sort of training for till I started writing some my own songs like with lyrics um at in my dorm room when I was about fifteen or sixteen um. And that's what was the beginning of writing my first record. And then, so I sort of just did, took the route of, I'm actually not going to dance at all. After I sort of graduated SAB, um, I wanted to stay in New York um, and I, I didn't want to join any, I just didn't want to dance anymore uh, for whatever, uh, an array of reasons. And then, so I, I started waitressing and sort of pursuing a way to figure out how to get a record deal and what I ended up doing is um my dad's a pilot and he was very lucky he was he was flying someone who was friends with Ahmed Erdian and I had made a little like cassette tape and he gave the cassette tape to Ahmed's friend and then Ahmed he this guy actually gave it to Ahmed and Ahmed called, called left a message for me at my dorm when I was oh, in wow. ballet school and I started meeting with him and so that was really cool because it I think because of his interest, I ended up getting a publishing deal. That was like sort of the beginning of it. Very, very kind of one of those dreamy moments. You know what I mean? I'm, but you know, a lot happened after that. Sure. And, um, but that was really how I just to answer your question. How I sort of jumped from being able to sort of leave my my waitering job and then just be able to do music full time and playing shows around New York for sure, like Bitter End. Yeah, Sawa Cafe. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that's the thank you. I, I know there's always more, way more to the story, but thanks for distilling it into the major moment. <laughs> um, and I promise I'll only ask one question about A Thousand Miles. I'm sure you're tired of talking about it, but it did get you three Grammy nominations, Record of the Year, Song of the Year. It was, it was massive. So, how much did that change your life? How cool is it that you, literally anyone anywhere in the world can hear -na 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 -na, and they'll know the song? I mean, you're it's you're part of history with that one. So just <laughs> how much did it change your life? Yeah, that's it's pretty crazy. Um, I think it yeah changed my life forever. I think um, I will. I'm at a place in my I'm in a chapter in my life right now in particular where I'm like it's just like no complaints. Yes, baby. Get it. I mean, you can ask that because I'm in an interview. Okay, sweetie. Thank you. Um, sorry. Um, where I'm just like, all right, I this has allowed me to have such freedom to really step outside of the the mainstream and just do take sort of big risks and do engage in collaborations I've always wanted to engage in and just giving me a level of like um artistic freedom and room to explore that's it is amazing and then I can I, I can always just play that song for people and it brings them I don't know it's it's a weird thing man I don't know how that <laughs> happened I feel like there's a lot of other songs out there that are like better than that song but there I think it's a piano thing that people just I'm just very lucky they, that people chose to love it you know Absolutely. Well, we we will be we would be here all day if we went through all your albums, Harmonium, Here Isn't These, Rabbits on the Run. Is, is it Lieberman? Lieberman? That was it painting by your great grand your late grandfather? Is that right? Lieberman? Yep. Lieberman. Lieberman, okay. yep. Lieberman well, was his original name and then he changed it because he was a little concerned to have um a Jewish name as a uh, shirt designer. So uh, to honor our um Jewish uh history and um, who we are um, on my mother's side, I wanted to highlight a name, um, bring it back out from the shadows into the light again. 
Cool. Well, a second ago, you mentioned that, that, you know, it's funny that a thousand miles was so big because you thought there are better ones you've written. Do you have an example or two? If, if Let's say there's some listeners that only know you from a thousand miles, which is crazy. But like, let's say you, you want them to, to give them some homework like or fun homework. <laughs> like, go to this album or this song or you know what I mean? Is, is there something? Where should they start? <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I think the I would say a sort of a reset or not a reset, but like there's like my second chapter started with rabbits on the run though. I do still do sound still very young. Cause my voice has really changed as I gotten older, which I've enjoyed that. <laughs> but, um, but I feel like, uh, yeah, it got, got lower in Liberman, which I love that. So, so rabbits on the run is probably a good place to start. It's a short record. It's all recorded to tape. And I recorded it with Ari Ingber and the drummer, uh, Petra Callahan from my morning jacket with Steve Osborne at the helm. And that was like recorded in the English countryside, you know. Um, and then Liverman is like the brain bath meditation, like really cool. Put it on the morning when you have coffee, e evening when you whatever, tea, wine, and um just a vibey background like that brings you, I think if, hopefully affects your mood, um, makes you calm and chill. And there's some songs on there that I love very much, especially Take It Easy was the is the first song from Liverman that I love. So and then yeah. I mean, I'm going to, and I'm going to place some of my, I'm going to cherry pick from those two albums and put those in the set as well. Great. So we'll hear all of that and some of the hits and all of that, the whole gamut at, at, at Annapolis on March 1st and Birchmere on March 2nd. So everybody get your tickets now. Final question. I want to ask real quick about the Broadway debut in Beautiful, the Carol King musical. What was that in 2019? I guess it was right before the pandemic, I guess. Um, but I, it, it's sort of I guess it was sort of a you know I guess similar to like a Sarah Bareilles with Waitress but it's this was a, mu a musician Carol King so it's a natural transition for you but it had to have been kind of exciting to try a whole different medium I mean I don't know if you'd even really done much acting even before that I don't know you tell us but what what was yeah. it like getting to do Broadway yeah no I was so scared I actually reached out to Sarah because I was like what am I doing and she's a musical theater like master and very experienced and so I was like help me and she was like listen once you just that first show when you just you just jump off the cliff and you're just gonna you're just gonna go it's just you just need to jump off the cliff and you'll be good um but it took a ton of preparation I'd never acted on stage before and I just really wanted to bring something really natural to her that role sort of I'm I know I, Carol, I I don't know her very well, but I had the honor of getting to write with her early on in my career, and I just like it was one of the greatest experiences and most challenging experiences of my life, and just to be part of that um, that group of actors and singers and dancers, that was the greatest honor, and not just not just to tell Carol's amazing story, but to be part of that production was awesome. Absolutely. Well, maybe one day, you never know. Maybe they'll do a Vanessa Carlton musical. You never know. <laughs> oh, God. But the, oh, that, God. the legacy is 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 still left to be written. There's many more chapters before, you know, we get to Carol King territory. But you know what I mean? Like, I, We're excited to see where you go from here. And Love is an Art is a great next step. But this Future Pain tour, lots of good songs. And thanks for breaking down that those songs, that album, in depth. Uh, that was great. Um, well, thanks so much. We'll let you run. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, it's Ram's Head, Annapolis, March 1st, B Birchmere in Alexandria, March right. 2nd. Vanessa Carlin, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.